Hello listeners, this is Fix Your Eyes on Jesus once again. And I'd like to welcome you as we journey together to do our Bible reflections. Today we are going to look at the book of Exodus chapter 14 from verse 10. The Bible says, Pharaoh was already near where the Israelites looked up and saw that the Egyptians were on the march in pursuit of them. In great fright, they cried out to the Lord, and they complained to Moses, saying, Were there no burial places in Egypt that you had to bring us out here to die in the desert? Why did you do this to us? Why did you bring us out of Egypt? Did we not tell you this in Egypt when you said, Leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians. Far better for us to be the, the slaves of the Egyptians than to die in the desert. <clears throat> but Moses answered the people, Fear not, stand your ground, and you will see the victory the Lord will win for you today. These Egyptians whom you see today, you will never see again. The Lord himself will fight for you. You have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you lift up your staff and with the with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in that the Israelites may pass through it on dry ground. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thanksgiving, Lord. We honor you, we praise you, we worship you. We thanksgiving in our hearts, we welcome your presence. We pray that you may teach us something new from your word that is going to help us to keep our focus on you this day, to keep our eyes fixed on you through every of our experiences. We honor you, we praise you, and we worship you. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. So we are looking at a scripture and uh, we are going to look at other scriptures as we continue with this discussion. And the topic that we have chosen for this meditation is the posture to receive from God. The posture to receive from God. So we just read a background of what was going on. So the Israelites were coming from Egypt heading to Canaan as the Lord had promised and this is the journey that Moses was leading them and they just got to a point where the topic for what I just read from verse 10 says crossing of the Red Sea so this is where they met a Red Sea a Red Sea where they, 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 they did not know how they were going to cross over this sea and <laughs> They just felt like um, it was going to be the end. Now, the question I have in my heart <laughs> as I think about this Red Sea situation, because these are uh, situations that come our way as believers of Jesus. They happened to people who God had already assigned a deliverer to go and get them out of the slavery of Pharaoh. Then the question I have, the most faithful, most caring, most wonderful, compassionate, unfathomable, merciful God could not could not have sent um, a Moses after hearing their cry from the land of Gentiles, Egypt, and then bring them so that they can die just before the Red Sea. That is not how God rose. And I'm so, so grateful because when you look at the Bible, when we read even the New Testament after Jesus came, we can see what Jesus came to reveal to us. Jesus came to reveal to us who God is. Because in the Old Testament, we are reading all these acts of God. But Jesus, who is God, had to show up and to show us to show us that is why the book of Colossians reminds us that Jesus is the invisible, um, is a visible image of God. 
a visible image of the invisible God. Jesus came to reveal to us the heart of God through the experiences that he presented before us, through the healings and the miracles that he did, through the sufferings on the cross, through the love, the most abounding love of God that he released to us. So when we look at circumstances in our lives that present to us negativity or present to us uh, inability or present to us impossibilities, then we think about it and we see through the eyes of Jesus the same circumstances we see Jesus on the other side. What did Jesus say? He said it is finished. He said it is finished on the cross. So that means there is no situation, no circumstance, no challenge, no trouble, no any situation that will ever present itself to us that is going to overcome us because Jesus overcame. And I'm reminded a song that uh, somebody sang. He said, I overcame, I overcame, I overcame, I overcame. And uh, so it means that as long as Jesus died and rose again, then we can live knowing and believing that he has given us the power that he has spoken about in the book of first john chapter 5 who is a victor in the world the victor is the one who has faith in jesus so this is um, the prerequisite of receiving receiving and being able to walk in victory you have to believe in jesus and the beauty of this moment as we look at it is to remember that um the faithfulness of God could not be measured in an instance of hardship. Yeah, so I remember this uh, song that someone sang and he said, I overcame, hallelujah, he won the victory, hallelujah, he said it is finished. My story is written, oh, I overcame, I overcame, hallelujah, I overcame. You see, <laughs> we have to talk about victory, speak about victory, even when the situation at hand presents something different. And this is a situation here. That's why the Lord was asking Moses, why are you crying to me? Already when the Israelites, even after seeing the hand of God, the power of God and all the miracles that they had already seen. <laughs> oh my goodness. And this is what happens to us because this is here to teach us and to remind us that God still cares. And after seeing all those miracles, look at them. They got to a point where just the Red Sea, they started complaining to Moses, probably because of fear and anxiety and all this negativity presented on their eyes. You see, what we see controls what we think. That is why we have to learn to fix our eyes on Jesus through every experience, meaning that we cannot... Um, allow what we see and what presents to us whatever life presents to us to have a final say when we know that only jesus has a final say so um this situation this red sea situation caused the israelites to start complaining and they were asking moses were well, there no grapes in egypt that we came to die here so they could see themselves dying <laughs> you see they saw the red sea and they immediately their mind they could see themselves dying just there so how is it that they could not even have thought of crossing like how come they did not see the positive side of things because this is how we react to situations this is how research has proved <laughs> that the human mind first runs to the negative so that is why it has to be a work that we have to put in every day to help our minds to think positively and this is how Many people have written books on positivity. Well, personally, I have read many books in the past, but none of them really um, gave me what I have received from the word of God. And it is from all that uh, summary that I come to believe or have come to believe that the greatest 
positive, the greatest book, <laughs> of course, is the word of God, the greatest book that can help us to live a positive minded life and see results. And it brings results is the word of God because it is not just a book that was written. It is the word of life. The word of God, who is the word of God is Jesus. So if Jesus is the living word of God, the word that was in the beginning, then the experience has to be different. All these other books are written to help us to probably uh, believe in yourself. Uh, I don't know, I can do it. Or oh, enough is enough. All those things, they are just positive affirmations. But without the Holy Spirit, I don't think uh, they will have a long time effect. They can be temporarily, but not a long time effect. So, we are looking at a Red Sea situation. The Israelites who God ordained to be brought out of slavery by a Moses that he called from the wilderness when all the odds were proving that he was not even the right person to be chosen, but God chose him. The faithfulness of God is seen through this experience because this faithful God cannot, will not, shall not allow you and I to come to a situation of a Red Sea. When we have been journeying with the Lord, when we have believed the Lord, when we have trusted him, when we have seen his wonders and leave us to die at the Red Sea. He did not allow the Israelites to die at the Red Sea, so he will not allow. So what is this moment of a Red Sea? It is any situation that presents itself in our lives that probably we might not have answers to, that probably seems like a mountain so high that we cannot even see beyond it, that presents itself like a very complicated situation. Is it a medical report? Is it that one moment, that grief moment in, in our families or our relations? Is it that... Um, whatever situation that you can imagine or you could be going through that everything everything that you have tried to do does not seem to work or everything that you have in your hands or within your capacity or your gifts or your talents or your profession cannot even solve it is that moment that is a red situation now the instruction here is very clear because what the Israelites did is not how we are supposed to do we are not supposed to complain because when we complain about any situation the next immediate thing or whatever follows is that we are going to remain in that position because this is not how uh, this journey, this relationship works with God. So to know that complaining will not work, uh, we have to like shift. We have to shift the atmosphere and make sure we are not caught up like the Israelites complaining. Because you see, we complain when we forget what God has done. But when we look back and see what God has done in our lives, that even the fact that we can see, we are, actually we can see. So the eyes, we can see the Red Sea, that is already a miracle, you know the fact that we can breathe, the fact that we are alive, that is already a miracle. To see the far that God has brought us, helps us and gives us the grace to be able to trust him and to do, the, to do what he's instructing the Israelites to do. This verse that we are going to read now. So he said in verse 13, uh, Moses answered, um, Moses answered the people, fear not, fear not. Stand your ground and you will see the victory the Lord will win for you today. So it means that out of fear or anxiety, we might say some words. We might think some things out of fear. We might start see, thinking or seeing negativity and allowing it to uh, come into, into our mind and our spirits will be polluted. So... He says that do not fear, fear not. We've been told that there is fear not, do not afraid, do not be afraid. This fear not statement 365. So meaning every day that should be the first thing, the first pill that we take, fear not. Do not be afraid. Anytime we face any situation, anytime we rise up, we should not be afraid of the day. So that is why we have to live that day in faith. Because we are going to meet situations, we are going to live moments that this fear is going to try to creep into our spirit. So we have to beware about it. And then he said, uh, stand your ground. You will see the victory the Lord will win for you today. Stand your ground is to mean that be firm. You see, to be firm, we have to be rooted in something. Imagine if um, a tree is not firm enough, any wind can just blow it off. If a, the, the tree, the roots of a tree are not grounded enough, anything can just blow it off. 
So who is the firm foundation? The firm foundation is Jesus. And then it says you will see the victory the Lord will win for you today. So they can see the Red Sea, but they're gi- being given instructions on what they are going to do to see the victory to fear not and to be firm to be firm in their faith to be firm in trusting god to be firm in trusting that the god who has brought them this far will definitely take them where he has promised to be firm that the promises of god are yes and amen that he is true to his word to be firm that god will never fail to be firm in the mercy of God. The Egyptians whom you see today, you'll never see again. The Lord himself who fight for you, you have only to keep still. And then Moses was given the instruction that he needed to do as the leader of this group. Now, <clears throat> it is very key and important for us to look at some verses that are connected to this scripture that the Lord is uh, guiding us to. And one of those verses is when he said in, <clears throat> in the book of psalms he says in psalms 46 and that is verse 11 psalms 46 verse 11 the bible says be still and confess that i am god i'm exalted among the nations exalted on the earth but the key scripture here is to be still (laughs) because if we are not still then we will not be able to uh, move to the next step is like to be firm and when we look at this scripture if we read the whole of psalms 46 it is a psalm that is revealing to us that uh, god is our refuge and strength so whatever we need at whatever moment of our life he is so it is like one of those psalms that is connected to the great i am the Lord I am, his name, as his, as our present help at every time of need. So the Bible tells us that to be still and to confess that he is God in every situation, even though we cannot see clearly, we have to be still and know that he is God. It is one of those moments that the Lord wants us to uh, bring into our mind about the fact that um, there is nothing that is impossible to him. There is nothing he cannot, like he is God, that um, he has an office and that office is where he is called God. (laughs) He's trying to reveal to us with this verse to be still that no matter what the situation is, because even if we read a few verses before that, uh, verse 9 says, Come and see the works of the Lord who has done fearsome deeds on earth, who stops wars to the ends of the earth, breaks the bow, splinter the spear, burns the shield with fire, who says, Be still and confess that I am God, I am exalted among the nations, exalted on the earth, the Lord of hosts is with us, our stronghold is the God of Jacob. So to be still means we have, we don't have to allow fear because fear means that we are um, inclining to the negative but to be able to acknowledge, believe and accept the fact that the Lord is king the Lord is the king of kings and he is still seated on the throne not not loitering or wondering, worried about how to intervene in our situation but that he is God in every situation he is the one who the Bible says in in Romans 8.28 that he has the capacity the power and everything to work out everything for our own good he's not just Alpha and Omega but he's also a God who can change any situation good or bad for our own good now i bring your attention once again to a scripture we have in the gospel of john chapter 6 from verse 10 this is a a scripture about the multiplication of the loaves it starts from uh, verse 1 but i'm gonna read just the last part so this is where jesus said have the people recline Now, there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. Praise God. 
So my attention goes back to the same scripture that you're looking at in the uh, book of Exodus, the posture to receiving from God. We have seen the situation that is in front of the Israelites and what the Lord said that they should do, not to be afraid, but to stand, to be firm, to be firm to stand their ground and they will see what the Lord will do. So it doesn't matter what they can see that is causing them to think negatively and to think that that is going to be their end. It shall not be because God is faithful. Then we looked at a scripture in the book of uh, Psalms 46 that says, be still and know that I am God, meaning that he is God. So we just need to um, hold on to what we know about him hold on to and trust that his promises are tried and true. They are yes and amen. He does not change, but the situations have to change. His faithfulness is manifested when a situation like this shows up. And we will come to know that even for the Israelites who get to this point, it was God's doing. There was an easier route, but the Lord brought them through this hard path so that he can reveal to them his glory and so that he can drown um, the the the. Actually, it is a verse. It is written here, verse 17 says, But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. So we know what happened, that actually Pharaoh's chariots were drowned in the water. So for the Lord to have brought them through this, he had a plan. He always has a plan. We have been looking about living a life of purpose and we have come to know that in our lives, God always has a plan. So it is not a situation. There is no situation that can show up in our lives that um, he will not have had a plan about. But what matters is how we are going to respond to these situations that come, to the circumstances that present themselves to us so that God can still do what he wants to do or he has planned to do and so that we can receive he is still God so the situation will not change him so he wants us not to be changed he wants us not to be changed by the situation but watch and see what he can do so that the situation can have a positive impact in our lives and so that for our own good and for the greater glory of his name then uh, we shall receive victory now now this feeding of the multitude was um a moment that the Lord was beginning his ministry and he commanded that the men should sit down before the feeding so <laughs> he in this gospel of John the Bible is very clearly and put here that he said have the people recline and we have been told that actually there was a great deal of grass so there were uh, they would have been able to sit down without any problems without any struggles so it means if there is a great deal of grass it will be even comfortable to sit so the lord knew that they needed to be in a certain kind of posture to be able to receive what they were just about to be fed with so this is why they were asked to sit down and recline. Not just sit down, to recline. And um, maybe to chill out. <laughs> and then he said, um, verse 11 says, Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, distributed them to those who were reclining. And also as much of the fish as they wanted. Praise God. When I look at this verse, I see something, something really deep because... He said he commanded first there was a command given just like we read in the book of exodus fear not stand your ground you will see the salvation so is it possible that uh, he's giving a command you see the command of the lord is his will so in obedience to the command of god then we see the victory we see his power move in a mighty way it looks very um maybe casual to just tell them guys sit down all the men sit down and then you'll be served but do you see it is very very crucial and all the gospels have picked up on this aspect that the lord commanded that let the men sit down but um more than that when you look at this this um 
this direction to sit down, it is not just sitting down. It means to be in a posture to receive what they were just about to get. To recline actually is to chill out. And um, I imagine that the fact that, is it possible that there were people there who did not or maybe just decided not to sit down? Yes, I think it's possible because in life, these moments come. And even though the word of God tells us this command, we have to make the choice of what we need. We have to make a choice of what to do, to be obedient to the Lord. And when they were obedient, then they received what the Lord was coming to give. So they they received and the Bible records that as much, meaning they could get as more, more than enough. So this more than enough, this overflowing, um, uh, these blessings, this, this, okay, the, the, <laughs> the focus here is on food because they are being fed. But when we think about it, it means that even receiving from God, means that we have to be in a certain posture and i see (laughs) i see also what david said in the book of psalms psalms 23 verse 2 he said the lord is my shepherd there is nothing i lack do you see even this multitude they can actually declare this after they have received they received um what they needed at that moment he says in green pastures you let me graze to safe waters you lead me you restore my strength in green pastures you let me graze so he's the one who leads us to green pastures so we can receive what we need and through what we receive then we get restored praise god now you see the man had to accept the command the command was given jesus gives the command and he prays for for the 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 food and then after the multiplication happens he now asked the disciples to serve to those who have accepted and those who have obeyed the command to sit these are the ones that the Bible records that were given even much more. And they were actually asked to recline. Hmm. So when I think about it, and I look at all these other verses that we have looked at, it said, be still and know that I am God. It means all these people uh, in the book of this gospel of John, the multitude was hungry and Jesus saw and he wanted to feed them. In the, in the middle of the crowd, there was a boy and this boy had only a little bit that had been packed <laughs> for him, but Jesus was there. So in his hands, then he multiplied And when he multiplied the loaves and the fish, it was enough to feed the multitude, enough to feed everybody, and even it remained. But my my concern is to receive, the posture of receiving. Moses was there. He was told what he needs to do so that the Israelites can cross over to the other side when they were seeing the Red Sea and thinking it was the end. So now we know that God was still in control and in charge. Even if they found the Red Sea, God was still aware. Because you see, he had already placed a solution in their midst, that, but they could not see. So they were worried, they were concerned, they were afraid, but they could not see. They started complaining, but they could not see. Because all they could see is the negativity, is the Red Sea. And then of course, with the negativity, then the fear, And the fear, they started complaining or thinking they are going to die there. But God had a different plan, which he advocated because he is God. So this is where we have to be still and know that he is God. Because at the end of the day, he will do what only he can do. No wonder Jesus said to his disciples, 
what is impossible for man is possible with God. And when the angel brought the message to Mary, when she was given the message of the Annunciation, the angel said, for God, all things are possible. So what do we declare? We declare this morning that for God, all things are possible. It doesn't matter what we see or we can see. It doesn't matter what we can do or cannot do. You made a way. <laughs> Nothing shall be impossible for God. So this is the moment where we have to be still. He has to be what he said he will be. If he said he's the I am, he is the great I am, the Elohim, our present help at every time of need. It does not matter the nature of the need that shows up in our lives. It does not matter uh, how big the need is, how complicated the need is, how the situation presents itself. What matters is the greatness of our God. So we can look at the Red Sea, look at the mountain, look at whatever the situation is and still declare that we shall be still and know that the Lord is King that he is God. And the next verse says, he is exalted, exalted in the nations, exalted on the earth. Um, it says, I'm exalted among the nations, exalted on the earth. So once we declare and we are still and we confess that he is God, then we can actually exalt him exalt him make him great greater than that situation and the best way i have found is when we praise god even in the face of difficulty in the face of negativity in the face of situations that try to speak to us louder you see all these situations what what they are doing they are trying to speak to us they are trying to tell us oh let us see how great your god is okay now we have to know how is how great is my god and when we choose that in the face of these situations, you're not going to focus on them, but keep our, keep our focus on Jesus and still continue exalting Jesus, glorifying Jesus, then definitely he will show up and intervene in that situation. He has been known to be faithful. So um, he's not going to change just because uh, we have met a situation. <laughs> so this is the beauty of being still. So as we go on with this day, we shall keep declaring in our hearts and acknowledging what the word of God is, is teaching us to do. That no matter what shows up, we have to remember not to be afraid because when we have uh, faced the fears and the anxieties, the fear of the unknown, you know, all these kind of fears um, of incapability, the fears of what will or what will not then we are able, then we will not complain and we are able to be positive. And this positivity has to be built on trusting God, trusting that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. So if he did something for us yesterday, if we can see his hand somewhere yesterday in our lives, then we have to believe that even today he can deal with it and tomorrow he will deal with it. We have to believe that he's the Alpha and Omega. We have to believe that it doesn't matter what comes our way. He is already aware. He has already, you know, uh, placed a plan in place to be able to help us to overcome these situations. And that is why the book of John, 1 John chapter 5, reminds us that who is a victor in the world? The victor in the world is the one who has faith in Jesus. So through this journey, through these uh, challenges, faith is crucial. Faith is important. And faith is what pleases God and causes God to move. So we have to hold on to what we know and what we have known, what we have experienced. And if we feel like um, we need to uh, get deeper, just read the word of God and remind ourselves what the Lord has already taught us. Because through this journey, these moments will show up when we expect and when we don't even expect. But it's not the end. If God glorified himself through the experience that the Israelites were facing and they did not even see a solution, if Jesus glorified himself through an experience that presented itself, you know, and he multiplied the, the little the, the, the loaves and the little food, the little 
a young boy's lunch to feed the 5,000, a multitude, and we haven't even been told about the women and the children, then it means that anything in the hand of God, anything in the hand of God is more than enough. So we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about any situation. We just have to remind ourselves to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus through every situation and every circumstance. He will not, he shall not, he will never cause anyone who places their trust in him to be ashamed. That is what I believe because that is what the Bible tells us. And if this is the situation then you have to embrace it and speak about it confess it and move because it said to moses just move tell the israelites to move his intention is that any situation that comes and we look to him he will still help us and we have to trust him so that we are not stuck in that position his intention is that we move forward, forward in our thinking, forward in our lives, forward in our professions, forward in our, you know, everyday walk with him. Otherwise, if we allow this Red Sea situation to be louder than what we know about Jesus, then we are going to be stuck and will not be able to receive from him. So let us cultivate an atmosphere an atmosphere within us, around us, to receive what God has already promised. It is a done deal. But we have to work on ourselves, and this is how our hearts are open, and we get to receive for our own good and for the greater glory of God's name. So let us pray. I actually remember this song, um, which is very interesting and is connected to what we just looked at. It says, Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop, Jesus. You never stop. You never stop working. We make a miracle worker. Promise keep a light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We make a miracle worker. Promise keep a light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Mm -mm. We make a miracle worker promise keep a light in the darkness my god that is who you are even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working <laughs> yeah, that's just a melody that we can play in our hearts and uh, the lyrics to that song are actually biblical, so God is good. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, with thanksgiving for your word, Lord, we just want to offer our hearts to you, offer our mind to you, and any situations that our listeners could be going through that could have presented itself as a Red Sea. Oh, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, let it melt as they watch, as they see it, so that your glory may be unveiled and so that your goodness may be manifested in their lives and they may come to acknowledge what your word says, that you are faithful to the end, that whoever places their trust in you shall never be disappointed. This is where our faith is founded. Lord, help us to hold on and to trust you, to trust that whatever good work that you have begun in us, you will bring it to completion. There is nothing you cannot do. There is nothing impossible to you, Jesus. We honor you, we praise you, and we worship you. Thank you, Lord, for making a way where there seemed to be no way. There is no mountain too high that you cannot reach and no valley too deep that you cannot see. Have your way, Jesus. Be magnified. Be glorified. It is in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. 
Have a wonderful day and God bless you until we meet again.